Good morning, everyone. How is everybody on this lovely freezing Tuesday morning? At least it's freezing here where we are, where I am. Alright, so just gonna go in and invite some people again. So, um, anybody do anything exciting over the weekend? We just kind of stayed home. Um, was pretty much in the negative degrees all weekend and is still today, I believe. I haven't checked the weather. It's kind of depressing when it's that cold. Um, but yeah, so it's been pretty cold. So we didn't go out for any walks or really do anything or um, just didn't want to go outside. So um, that was pretty much our weekend. We just stayed in and watched TV and played some video games and I took a nap. Like, I never take naps. Well, I shouldn't say never take naps. I never take naps just to take a nap. Like, if I get a migraine or something, I'll go take a nap. Um, but this was just like one of those Saturday afternoon things. I'm like, I'm just gonna take a nap. So, um, that was pretty much it. Pretty boring weekend, but, um, for the most part, right now, this time of year, I'm okay with the boring weekends, um, which we've talked about, you know, winter is a time for that hibernation and rest. Um, it's what we're really meant to do. Um, so I kind of welcome it and I'm really okay with not doing anything for a little while. Our summers, well, our lives in general are, excuse me, Kathy, keep it off. Um, our lives in general are pretty busy, um, especially, you know, summertime. So, um, but this year it was like, even into the fall, it was like, well, it'll slow down in October. And then it was like, well, it'll slow down in November. <laughs> I was like, but it'll slow down in December. So, um, January has finally slowed down. Eric gets antsy. He has to have a purpose. He's a Virgo. So he has to have something to work on, something to be doing. Um, sitting around just being anti-productive or, or not productive is really against his way. Um, so sometimes I have to find little projects to keep him happy. <laughs> I have to try to find a little project that he can do in the house or something. That'll just take him a few minutes, not too long. And then that way he um, he feels like he's accomplished it for the day. It's not a total waste. <laughs> So, um, we have been talking about our, um, natal charts and the zodiac signs. So, um, I hope everybody had a chance to go on and get their, um, birth chart. If not, it's not too late. You can still go do it. Um, this is the first, um, zodiac that we're going to be talking about. So today we're going to be talking about Capricorns. Um, so we're just going to smudge some of my stuff here while I got it going. Don't usually smudge my books, but why not, right? I always like to smudge. I'm just kind of over your shoulder and around you. Practice there. All right, so we have then our smudge. I'm going to light my candle today. So this is one um, I made. I printed the picture off from the internet. Um, and um, this is a sari ribbon. And I'm not sure if we've talked about those before. Um, these um, come from India. And they're actually strips of fabric from the clothes. Um, from their clothes. There's a whole tradition behind it, so. Um, if we have time at the end, maybe I'll tell you about it. I don't want to miss out on what we're talking about today, though. So, um, but I did want to show you that. So that was just a candle from the dollar store, um, a picture that I printed out from the internet. Um, I got some like double-sided sticky stuff and stuck it on there, and then I just tied that ribbon on there. And so, sorry, my I got tea. And the little tea leaves are finer than my mesh bag. 
So I'm swallowing little tea, tea leaves here. Um, no, can from the dollar store, printed it off, got double-sided sticky back, and then I just have the ribbon um, that had come on a package from Sage Goddess. Um, I have my um, sari ribbon here that I tied around my waist, on uh, my waist, yeah, I wish. Um, my wrist, um, that was the very first ribbon that I got from Sage Goddess, and I tied it on there, and it's pretty sh shabby looking, but it's still on there. Um, it's S-A-R-I. Sorry, ribbon, if anybody's interested, but like I said, maybe we'll talk about it. So last Tuesday, today's Tuesday, right? I'm so confused. Last Tuesday, we pulled the white opal card. So we're going to just put that back in the deck and pull another card for this week. And then we'll talk about um, Capricorns. This is just a card that we're just pulling. It's not intended for any one purpose or one person. Um, it's just kind of for um, learning. All right, what did we do? We pulled a fire agate. All right, so that is for vitality, creativity, and protection. It's for your root and sacral, sacral chakra. And uh, fire agate, okay, now it's just gonna snowball. Fire agate stimulates creativity, brings fiery courage and persistence, lights the fire of sexuality, and fills you with the zest for living. You have pulled this card because you are in need of more in the body life force energy to help you through your journey on earth. Meditate with fire agate for a boost in your passion, drive, and vitality. So if that kind of resonates with anybody um you might be interested in getting a fire agate this way we can kind of have a little bit of knowledge about the stones this way you know we do a card every tuesday and then like i said we'll do a chakra card every thursday um just a little bit of a helpful reminder so i'm going to leave that out and so we can talk about it again a little bit on thursday Put the rest of the cards away. And now we will talk about Capricorns. So, if you got your natal chart and you have Capricorn in any of your um, six, typically, um, for the most part, oh, I froze for a second. Typically, for the most part, um, people talk about the first three, the um, sun, the rising, and the moon. But um, just because it's a whole, um, you know, we're going to kind of take this out over the whole year. Because we're going to talk about each sign as we're in that sign. Um, so as... So where it's going to be a whole year, I did kind of want to incorporate those extra, the Mercury, the Venus, and the Mars in there. So, um, because just um, where, like I said, it's going to be kind of a whole year thing to spread it up. So, might as well know all the whole six signs, right? Um, yesterday, I did post a video. It was, um, it's one of Athena's videos. It's on Capricorn. Um, she did those videos 2015, 2016, I don't remember exactly when, but, um, so when she's talking about class material or she's talking about upcoming things, just kind of disregard all that because, um, they're really old, but the information in there about the Capricorn and I will, um, she has one for all of them and I will post them again as we're in that time. So January um, 20th is the last day for the Capricorn. And then um, some point in there we'll learn about the next sign. And I'll post the video for that sign as well. So that's kind of how the that's going to go. So um, throughout the whole year, you'll get one of those videos and you'll get a video from me um, on each one of the zodiacs. Okay. So um, the Capricorn is... Um, Sorry, I have a runny nose today. I have all kinds of issues today, I guess. 
Um, the Capricorn is a worker. Um, a little bit different than the Virgo worker, though. Um, try not to keep going back to Virgo, but I just... My husband's like Virgo, Virgo, Virgo. So um, I know the Virgo. <laughs> um, and Virgo and Capricorn are kind of um, similar a little bit. But um, Capricorn is very, um, very smart, typically. Um, okay, before I get into this. So when I say these things, um, if your sun sign, which is your birth sign, is a Capricorn, this is going to... Um, Kind of be your um, your true self. We've talked about the ascending sign or rising sign is kind of your first impression, how you appear to people. Your moon sign is more of your subconscious. So for me, my moon sign is in Capricorn. So the things that I'm going to talk about today for Capricorn are kind of the things that pop up on me without me really knowing that they pop up on me. Um, but now that I'm aware of that, I try to look out for it and um, try to um, react and um, adjust <laughs> accordingly if I can. Um, so um, Capricorns are very smart. They're very sharp people and they're very knowledgeable. They're very work driven. Um, but their work driven is not, um, like I said, the Virgo um, just feels like they need to, they need to be doing some sort of task, some sort of project. They need to have a purpose. Where the Capricorn's work drive is more for um, to succeed, to climb the ladder. Um, where Capricorn's happy just to chop wood. If they can chop wood all day long, they'll chop wood all day long. Um, if they mow the lawn, they'll mow the lawn. Um, you know, that's uh, the Virgo just needs a task to be busy and to have a purpose. Where the Capricorn um, is more looking for that success. Um, they want to work and, and have some sort of success. Whatever that is to them may be different, um, you know. But they want to, um, they want to succeed in some way. So typically um, Capricorns who are more um, the um, birth signs will um, be some sort of like CEO um, of a company, um, they may be um, into politics, so they I would see that as a, a form of succeeding. Um, they may be in finance, um, things of that sort. So they would be in a more um, higher, uh, a lawyer, um, you know, things like that. Um, that would be kind of their um, things that they can win at, things that they would succeed at, um, things that they would be, um, achieve, you know, some sort of, um, higher praise, acknowledgement kind of stuff. Um, so that would be your Capricorn. Um, so the Capricorn strengths are, um, responsibility. So they're usually very responsible, um, because they want to be working all the time, <laughs> Um, so, um, they're usually pretty responsible. Um, you are not going to see Capricorns out wasting a lot of time. They're not going to be out, um, dancing, partying. They're not going to be, um, you know, the, the, um, just go on a road trip kind of people. Um, that's not really a Capricorn. So they're typically pretty responsible people. Um, they tend to be patient, um, because um, they're all about climbing that ladder and they, they know that they're not going to go from here. They're not going to come in as the, the mail delivery guy and be the CEO. They realize that they are going to have to climb that ladder and be patient and get to where they want to go. Um, and usually they have that all planned out. <laughs> like they have like the whole 40 steps um, to their success planned out by the time they're like four. <laughs> um, they're very resourceful. So if you need them for something, um, they, they are usually pretty resourceful. Whether or not they choose to be resourceful for you it depends on if they feel that whatever you are looking for suits their purpose in some way. Um, they're um, not much into giving. So um, 
if you went to them with a problem where the Virgo would be like, sure, I'll fix it. I'm right on that task. Um, a Capricorn's going to kind of weigh it out and be like, mm, is this really going to serve me anyway? Is this going to be like for my good? Um, but if they choose to help you, they'll be very, very resourceful, very helpful. And that goes, they're very loyal. Um, but their circle is very, very small. Um, so if you are um, kind of in with a Capricorn, I don't think I know any Capricorns. Um, at least not close. Like my kids aren't, my grandkids aren't. Um, I don't really know anybody that's a Capricorn. Actually, that's not true. I do know just one person who's a Capricorn. Anyway, um, they're very loyal, and um, but they have a very small circle. They are not the people to have like 500 friends on their Facebook. Um, they are going to have maybe seven or eight people in their lives that are really important to them, um, and they will kind of fight to the death for them, but everybody else is just kind of like, yeah, I like you, you're great, but you're just kind of over here, you know. They have a very small, Capricorn has a very small group of people that they um, like to have. And if you watch the video, I'm pretty much recapping the video, um, you know, just in my own version. But you'll you'll see that we're, I'm, I'm kind of telling you the same things that the video has. Um, I've watched the videos, I've read a few articles, I you know. And so I'm just kind of combining that, but pretty much the video does cover it. So if you've watched that one, you don't really need to watch this one. If you've watched this one, you don't really need to watch that one. But um, you just get a little bit of different perspective on um, on it coming from two different people. Um, there's a bug in here. Why would that happen? Um, so their challenges or their weaknesses, however you want to say it, um, is um, they're very distrusting. So, like I said, they're very loyal. Once they've they've um, kind of brought you in and they and brought you into their circle. So, um, if you're in their circle and yet they're loyal to you, they will trust you. But pretty much everybody else, um, they don't trust. Um, and it's not because. People are untrustworthy, which there are a lot of people out there that are untrustworthy. But the um, Capricorn, like I said, their main focus is to succeed. And if you're not helping them succeed, then you're in their way, <laughs> kind of, I guess. Um, Capricorn is really kind of a hard hard zodiac to start with um it's not one of the more pleasant um ones it's not about being fun loving or free or it's not about um being feisty um because <laughs> all the zodiacs have different um strengths and challenges but the capricorns is um is a tough one <laughs> Um, I'm Cap Moon, and I don't want to be Cap Moon. <laughs> I don't want to be a Capricorn. I don't want any Capricorn in my chart, but it's there. Um, so Capricorns are, are a hard one, and it's really a hard one for us to start with, but um, we might as well just do it and get it out of the way. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're um, not very imaginative. Um, they're not very creative. Um, as far as... The traditional kind of creative um, if it's going to help them succeed up the ladder like um, they need to create a plan they that's they can do that um, but they're not going to be typically they're not going to be any kind of artist they're not going to be any kind of musician because um, that's really not um, their um, their style so they want to be the boss and they want to be important is pretty much what it comes down to. Um, not because they want to boss people around or anything. Um, 
but just because that's like it's like naturally in them to like um just drive go succeed must be accomplished must be done it's like just naturally in them um it's just this drive um to succeed and if they're not succeeding then they're not happy it's just the way they are so that's kind of Capricorn. Um, like I said, um, they're going to be kind of resistant to um, anything that doesn't doesn't benefit them, really. I, I know I'm saying the same thing over again, and I'm trying to think of how to say it, you know, slightly different um, or more descriptive, but it's just not coming to me this morning. Um but yeah, really, just if it's if it's not going to benefit them, like if you see them at a social party, it's because they want to make a contact with somebody at the social party. If you see them out and about doing something that really doesn't seem like it's work-related, it probably is. It's just um, not maybe obvious to us in general, but... Um, they, they would not want to sit here and Capricorns are typically not going to want to sit here and watch my video. They're going to be like, why would I watch that video for like 30 minutes when I could be doing reports at work? <laughs> reports are way more awesome than this video. So that's just kind of how Capricorns are. Um, I'd be interested to know if I have any Capricorns in the group um, and if that resonated with any of you. Now, just remember, when I say all these things about a Capricorn, it depends on where that Capricorn is in your chart. So mine is in my moon sign, which means it kind of just sneaks up on me. It kind of happens without me really even being aware of it. Um, kind of uh, sneaks up when I, at work, I guess is a good example, when um, all the things need to be done and they're not getting done, I get really agitated um, with that. It's like, just do it. Just do it. Just take five minutes and do it and have it done. Like, just do it. <laughs> so that's my Capricorn sneaking out on me when I get like that. And when I kind of can feel that coming at work, I try to, like, take a deep breath, relax. I even close my eyes for five, ten seconds. And just kind of be like, okay, it's fine that it's not done. No one's going to die that it's not done. <laughs> it's okay. If it gets done tomorrow, it's fine. <laughs> but yeah, that Capricorn um, sneaks up on me. So anyway, what I was going for there was, depending on where your Capricorn is in your um, chart, someone's calling me where it is on your chart, other things in your chart may balance you out with that. So for example, if you're um, a Capricorn in your birth sign, but your moon sign, I'm going to use Sagittarius because that's my sign and I know it well. And I, So if you're a Sagittarius, you're kind of the free loving, fun person who doesn't like rules and doesn't like... Um, you know, tied down. So that Sagittarius um, moon sign for you, if you're a Capricorn sun sign, may balance you out some of that. So when I'm talking about a Capricorn and you go, well, I'm a Capricorn, but that doesn't really describe me. It may describe bits and pieces of you, not you as a whole. That's why I wanted you guys to have your charts so that you can, um, you know, see where your, your, um, signs lie and it'll give you a better understanding of of what really is going on so if you just didn't get your chart and you know you're a capricorn and you're watching this video and i went over all this stuff and you go i'm a capricorn but that doesn't really totally sound like me like maybe bits and pieces of it sound like me but not all of it that's going to be because you need to know what your other signs are in your rising and your um moon sign and um then even down into your Mercury, Mars, and your Venus signs. That's
that's going to um, explain more of how the whole chart goes together and how you all go together. Um, so, like I said, Capricorn um, doesn't really describe me. That's not my true self. That's not my birth sign, my sun sign. It's my moon sign. It's the stuff that sneaks up on me. Um, the stuff that just kind of pops out and I have to be like, whoa, slow down. <laughs> now, if your Sagittarius is your moon sign and that Sagittarius is more the free loving and the fun and spontaneous road trips and stuff. You don't really need to slow that down if you don't want to. Um, but like I said, Capricorn is really kind of the, the, um, the loner here on Zodiacs, it's kind of like the one that nobody really wants. Um, but as a community, as a whole, we need those Capricorns because if we were just all like road trip and see you later, bye, I'm ditching you guys. And we need the Virgos who are going to get things done. Um, cause if we didn't have those people, um, <laughs> we'd be in bad shape. So, if you are a Capricorn, I don't want to give you a bad rap. You are needed. You do have a purpose. There's a reason you are here. Um, Athena says in her video, and, uh, and I am learning this. I don't know this information all that well. But if you didn't watch the video, I did want to kind of cat, uh, touch base on it a little bit. Um, if you... Um, are I'm just drawing a blank today. Reincarnation. If you come back, you can come back as all different kinds of things. And you can come back as different people. But from my understanding, and um, as we learn things, I will explain things more to you. But I'm learning this too, so... Um, as I learn things, I will explain them to you the best I can. But Capricorns will never be a new soul. Capricorns have been around for a while. So if you are a Capricorn, this is not your first life. Definitely not your first life. Any of the other signs could be your first life. Capricorn will never be your first life. Sorry, I've got runny nose here. I'm all over the place today. Um, so, um, and there's two ways to look at it. And, and I don't know which way is right and I don't know which way is wrong. Um, some people believe that if you are here as a Capricorn, that you are here to repay some sort of karmic debt. That... Um, you are going to work that karmic debt off as your Capricorn, and then you can come back um, as anything uh, after that. That if you're coming back as a Capricorn, you in somewhere in your past life or lives have some sort of debt to repay. So in some way, you did something that you really shouldn't have. And that if you're here as a Capricorn, you're here to repay that debt and work off that not repay like directly repay like it's a work you know it's like a balance you know if you did something not so great now you're here as a Capricorn who is going to be a worker um, who is going to um, succeed and usually people when they succeed even though that's not their goal their goal is for them to succeed but in some some way they're they're helping other people whatever it is that they're doing if they're CEO of a company um, if they're in finance or if they're in politics, um, hopefully they're doing good with that and they are um, helping people in some way. So that's kind of the, how the karmic debt thing works. Other people believe that um, if you come back as a Capricorn, totally lost my train of thought here. Capricorn, you come back to repay karmic debt. Um, I don't know. It's gone. The other thing is gone. Just whew, out of my brain. Can't remember what step two was or part two. 
Sorry, guys. It'll come to me. <laughs> so, yeah. So if you're here as a Capricorn. Oh, sorry. That you choose to come back as a Capricorn. Um, so that, again, is um, a matter of what you believe. If you choose or not to choose to come back. Um, so some people believe that you are born into a Capricorn to pay off a karmic debt. Other people believe that you can choose to come back as a Capricorn. Um, and like I said, those Capricorns, even though nobody really wants to be a Capricorn, <laughs> we need those Capricorns. We need them to be the politicians and we need them to be the bankers and the financial people and the CEOs because without them, um, the rest of us would kind of not be doing so great, you know, if there was nobody here to um, be that responsible, take charge, succeed people. Um, we need them to balance out our, you know, the Sagittarius who just wants to sit by the bonfire and drink a Bloody Mary. <laughs> so some people believe that, believe that people can choose to come back as a Capricorn and that you know, they'll be like, it's like, there's an auditorium. I, this is what I picture in my head, an auditorium of all these little spirit people, energies floating around. And somebody's up at the podium and going, we need a Capricorn. Who wants to be a Capricorn? <laughs> we need five people to be Capricorns. And the guy in the back is like, mm, I'll go. If I have to, nobody else is going to do it. Um, but then they can choose to come back as um, Capricorns. Um, and knowing that the, in even though they're Capricorn and their main focus is um, succeeding and stuff, they know in some way that there there is a purpose for them and they are being helpful to the rest of us. Um, so that's kind of the Capricorn signs. Um, so if you have any questions, um, or like I said, even you know if you're Capricorn and any of that resonated or didn't resonate go ahead and put it in the comments because i'd be interested to know like i said what the rest of your chart has in it um that may be um you know making you who you are because we know there's like what there's 12 zodiac signs there are not just 12 types of people you know so depending on where all the zodiacs are in your chart is kind of all the little pieces that make you who you are and you know, all those different combinations can um, make, you know, make different personalities and different people the way they are. So with that, it is, well, I still have a few minutes. So if I have a few minutes, I was going to sign off, but I do have a few more minutes here. So um, I have a second piece of uh, sari ribbon here. So um, I'm taking it off so you can see it. So this is a piece, um, and the camera doesn't, you know, do it justice, but it's just a strip of fabric, okay? So in India, if I get this story right, hopefully I remember it all correctly. And if I told you this story before, then ignore me. Um, so in India, um, I think I may have told you the story before, but I've told it to some people before, so I don't know if I've told it on here before or not. Uh, in India, um, when their clothes are um, ripped or stained, they don't continue to typically wear them. Um, that is part of um, their culture. I wish that was around here. The clothes are stripped or stained don't wear it anymore. <laughs> but in India, they had this huge pile of, um, you know, not literally like a pile in the middle of town, but they had this overabundance of um, clothing that was not going to be worn anymore. And so, you know, they were trying to um, find purposes for it, something to, to reuse it for. 
And I don't know exactly how it came about, but um, they would, they ended up taking their clothing and ripping them into these strips. And um, they would take them out to um, a tree and they would make a wish and tie it on the tree. And so you, um, this photographer who was over there and, and um, saw this beautiful tree with all these beautiful bright colored ribbons tied all over it. And um, so he took some pictures of it and it was posted in a magazine. I don't know what magazine. And um, as anything with us, when we see something that's pretty, we want to do that and we want to have the same thing. And um, so um, people now actually have um, businesses just selling these ribbons. Now I'm hoping, I don't know, I'm hoping that they pay these people for their clothing in some way so the people are profiting somehow benefiting somehow from this um but um these ribbons are now like sold all over the world and so the the theory was that you um tied it on the tree and um made a wish And um, I, I won't even pretend to tell you about the gods in India because I don't really know about them all. Um, I know about a few, but um, I don't have any clue really yet. But yet, I will learn. Um, so, when I got mine, and I wanted to know what it is because that's just the way my brain works. I got this ribbon on my one of my packages from Sage Goddess. And um, I was asking people, what is this ribbon? Why do we have this ribbon? Where did this ribbon come from? Um, and I started learning about it. And, you know, I learned how it was spelled because I thought it was a sari ribbon, like S-O-R-R-Y. So I thought it was a sari ribbon, which kind of piqued my interest. Um, why we had a sari ribbon and realized that it's s-a-r-i sari ribbon and so i was reading online and articles and stuff and and read the story about this and i thought that was really cool um and again when we read something that's cool or interesting or beautiful or see something that's beautiful we we want it too um as americans we want all the things um, but I had the ribbon and so I didn't want to just throw it away. I wanted to do something with it. Um, I didn't want to tie it on a tree. Um, we have a bazillion trees in our backyard. So I was like, eh, you know, if we had that one tree that was like really nice in the yard, um, I might've tied it on that tree, but just to put one ribbon on a tree in the backyard, I'm like, eh, I don't really want to, what I want to do with it. Um, so I made my wish and tied it on my wrist, which you can't see right now because I have way too many bracelets on, but my tree tattoo, that's the roots. So it's this way. These are the roots. My tree tattoo is on my wrist. So that was for me, I'm, I made my wish and I tied it on my tree. Whatever works for you, right? So now I've ordered more stuff from Sage Goddess and I've got some more of the ribbons. And again, I didn't really want to just go out and tie them on a tree just to tie them on a tree. Um, so I wanted them to be um, a little bit more visible to me um, because I think they are in their strings hanging everywhere and they're falling apart 
Um, but to me, in its own way, they're still beautiful. And maybe it's the backstory behind them. I don't know. Of where they came from. But I tied it on a candle, so I will have it on the candle for a little while. And when the candle burns down, um, I'll probably just transfer it over to another candle. Um, this one came in my kit for this month's class because we are going to make a medicine bag in my class. So when um, I'm going to watch that video tonight. Um, it was live last night, but um, I had a meeting I had to go to and didn't make it back. So just real quick, I'll talk about this. So this is what we're going to make my medicine bag in. So when it's all done, it's going to be all tied up and my ribbon's going to be on there. Horrible visual, but that's, um, but all of the people in my class got a piece of cloth. And again, it's rough cut. Not straight lines, um, you know, um, but all of us got the cloth from the same piece of cloth. So it was this huge piece of cloth that everybody got a square off. So there are people all over the world that are taking this class that have a square of this same cloth. I thought that was pretty cool too. So that's just, you know, I think it's really cool that um, when Athena does her classes and her lives and stuff, she puts that extra little bit of thought into some of these things. Like, you know, anybody else would have just been like, ah, just cut them some material and send it to them. She made sure that they all came from the same piece of cloth. So I just think that's really, you know, it's that like extra little bit there. So, all right. So now I do have to go. I have to go to work. I did get in trouble for being late, which I am often so I'm trying to be better <laughs> so I want to make sure that I get there on time I'm not quite sure what we're going to talk about on Thursday um probably um like I said I'm going to watch the class tonight on um the medicine bag and then um Wednesday I have a class too so um maybe I'll incorporate something from them into it um we've got coming up on the 20th um, is the full moon, so maybe we can talk about the full moon. Excuse me, sorry. I'm not really sure what we're going to talk about yet. If you have something you want to talk about, if you have something you want me to go over, please send me a comment. Um, I will go over whatever you guys want me to go over um, as long as I know about it. And if I don't know about it, I'll learn about it. Um, so um, just remember to please comment or like or something in the video so that I know you've watched it. I know a lot of you watch it on the replay, which is perfectly fine as information's getting out there. Um, I don't care how um, or when. Um, so, you know, just give me a thumbs up or, you know, put watched or replay or whatever in the comments. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. If you need the link for your natal chart, um, put that in the comment. Um, any questions, put them in the comments. Um, you know, I'll answer any of those things. If you have friends that you think would like to be in the group, please go ahead and, um, you know, let them know. And um, we can get them in the group as well. Um, the more people that we reach out to, um, you know, the more um, it kind of spreads. And that's kind of the point. So I want to add people who want to add people who are going to want to add people. Um I don't do anything that charges anybody anything. Um, so that's, um, I'm not in it to make any money that kind of way. Um, I do put the Sage Goddess um, items up there, um, which kind of coincide with the things that we're talking about. Um, but again, tools are just tools. They, you don't need them. Um, to do any of the stuff we talk about, you don't need any of the tools. But if you wish to have the tools, um, I do try to put the links up there for you. Um, and if anybody's interested, I will, um, see if I can find a link for the fire agate that we pulled this morning. Um, and, but if you do purchase, um, from Sage Goddess, always remember to find, um, your coupon code for every day. There should be a coupon code that's going to give you a discount and potentially 
a free item or free items. So always look for your coupon codes. If you can't find a coupon code, send me a message. I will let you know what the coupon code is. But also when you're checking out down at the bottom, there's a spot for references, a reference code. My code is 2449. So if anybody's making any purchases, I would greatly appreciate it if you put in that code, 2449. I do get a percentage. It's a very small percentage. But hey, if you guys are out there buying, I'd like to make a little bit something off it if you're you know, watching my video and part of my group. Um, I've been doing this for four or five months and I haven't even made $20 yet. But hey, you know, you got to start somewhere. <laughs> so with that, I'm going to let you go. So I am not late again. Um, remember um, to be kind. Everybody has a story. Everybody's going through something. So um, even though somebody might be a miserable jerk to you today, um, just remember there may be a backstory to that. Um, and also that, you know, when you have your miserable days, wouldn't you like it if somebody was kind to you? So just kind of remember that and because your kindness could change someone else's day and yours as well. So thanks for watching. Lots of love. And love. I can't talk at all today. Lots of love, and I will see you guys all on Thursday. Thanks. Have a great day.